So as you can see, we are taking the H3 down to Bergendal. The sign might say 57, but from Pretoria Skop to Bergendal, taking the tar road all the way around is 100 kilometers. Give or take. Yeah. That was from adding up all the little sections on the map. <laughs> yeah. We decided to take the tar road because of all the rain falling and stuff like that. We didn't want to take chances on those gravel roads because we did take a few of them and there's big dams of water that we can't get through. So we're not going to take any chances. May I just say that we are camping at Berg Endol this evening. And as you can see, it's a bright and clear sunny day, which <laughs> normally happens when we camp. <laughs> So yeah, I look forward to it. Yep, hopefully it gives me a break so I can pitch the tent, eh? Sure. Another day in the Kruger Park, another adventure. Exactly. This is very interesting. Eh? I love things like this. One of the centuries-old trade routes linking the east coast and the hinterland past here. It was explored by food tracker Karhulis Trichard in October 1845. Wow. Now I presume Karulus Trichard must have been related to Louis Trichard, maybe his son or something like that. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Maslam Bamadube. <laughs> Yo, Maslam Bamadube River. Okay. That's a cool name. That's quite the tongue twister though. Yeah. A little bit of water my side. No, nothing here about me. Oh, he's motoring away. Eh? Trying his wings. I see that. Is there another one? There is another one, yeah. Biamiti River. How cool. Yes. Let me see if there is water. It's a high bridge, eh? Oh, it is. And a wide river bed. There is water here on my side. Little bit on my side. It looks like he's wearing a floppy hat. With his ears. <laughs> How's that rock? I wanted to call it the stone. It's not a stone, it's a rock. Balancing on the top there. That's incredible how that tree is being growing into that rock, eh? It's literally grabbing onto the rock. Yeah. Wow, is it? Here we are at Offsal picnic spot. Wow, it's been <laughs> so long. No, yeah, it has, eh? Yo. I remember it. There's a shop yet too. Yes. Offsal. King yeah. Lowood Trading Post is their shop. And it was the offsole trading post. Okay. Yeah. Offsole picnic site.
Termitarium. Other little tables have got each with their own little roof. That's cute. These don't need them, they're under trees, but that doesn't help much in this weather. Don't feed the animals. Beware roaming animals. <laughs> This isn't a sign you see very often. Do not pass this point. Yeah. I think I must spoil Sonia with a hot chocolate. That's the perfect time for a hot chocolate. That's what I'm going to do. Yep. No rhino spotting here. I see, I think I understand why now. I get it. I'll go and explain to Sonia why. Gullies. Ice cream. What is that? Oh! I told you I was less since this morning. I know, I know. I thought I'd get the sweetener in the back there. This is still the jock trick, 1885. I just love the fact that they honor a dog like this. Eh? Oh, absolutely. That's wild. Now we're taking the H22. It's a gravel road, but it looks fine. Yeah, it does look alright. And on the sightings board at Pretoria Scorp, we saw that a cheetah was spotted on this road. And we both would really love to see one. Yes. So we thought we'd take a drive. Give it a bash. And see what we happen upon. Also, we heard rumors here at Afsal that there are lion, a mating pair of lion at the James Waterhole, which is also along this route. Yeah. <laughs> We're not really in the business of chasing sightings, but if we can see them, we'd happily accept. Why not? Historical site. 
It's going to have a squiz. It doesn't say how far. No, it doesn't. Glen Leary. What fisher mines it? Hidden water. In the period 1875 to 1892, this was a well-known outspan used by the transport riders of the time on the road between Leidenburg and Delagoa Bay. Ranger Harold Trollop camped here on 24 July 1926. Only a few days later, on the 3rd August 1926, his father-in-law, John Glenn Leary, who accompanied him in the felt, was fatally injured by a leopard along a tributary of the Sambanyati Sprite, barely three kilometers northwest from this site. Wow, sir. Incredible. And this is still part of the Jock of the Bushveld trek. Oh, this is another Jock block, but it's been removed. So. Even the blocks in the Kruger Park don't escape. This block says, it's just across the road from the Jock block, or memorial, the old transport route between Leidenburg and Delagoa Bay, which was in use during the period 1874 to 1892. Right here by a solar panel. I must say it's very interesting though that they've marked out the route that they used to travel back in the day. Yes, I we love that I kind love of thing. That. I can just yep. see them on their ox wagons and... Oh. Jock running along. Hey man. <laughs> so here we have the pileup which tells me something interesting is happening. I wonder what. This must be the mating bee the gentleman spoke about at Offsol. Yes. Stretching. Switch on that I can wipe. Thank you. size of this guy. Fleming. Fleming, yes. Please look this way. Or is it only the two of them as far as you can tell? Yes. I think they're also a mating pair. Look how it She's nice and close now. Oh. She knows we haven't seen many of her kind the last four days. Yes. So the tip we got it off so panned out. Eh? Yes. That doesn't happen often either. No, it doesn't.
Yes, this is the general direction we would love you to keep on moving in. Yes. She's checking him out. His mane is quite black. Do you yeah. see there? He's a beautiful male. On his chest. Yeah. You love the black manes. Yes. Not, not like the Kalahari males. Oh, his mane is very dark yeah. for me. Yes, come closer. Did he flop? Yeah, behind the bush now. Can you believe it? <laughs> this is enough is enough. Hey, Marabu stalks. We love ourselves a single lane bridge. Yes, I'm waiting for my turn. Everybody's heard about the lions. Yes. <laughs> They're right, difficult to see in this weather. Yeah. Yay. Love this. Oh, look all the rocks, bud. Oh, it's pretty. Mm -hmm. An elephant would just make this scene perfect. It would. I see evidence. Yo. Gorgeous, yeah. Very nice. This is a solar panel with cameras and stuff on it, with a receiver and stuff. So I suspect that this is for poaching. To monitor, yeah, definitely. definitely. We saw another one which we didn't record uh, by the other junction over there. So I think this is definitely to see what's going on here. Which is fantastic. Mm. And what I also noticed, which, and I've been trying to figure out why, They've got the rhinos on the sightings board, but they don't have markers that you can show exactly where you see it. The orange markers yes. aren't, no, aren't any. So we spoke to one of the, the, the game drive people and I said to him, am I right in thinking that they don't want to show the location of the rhinos because of the poaching? And he said, yes. Yes. That's why they've removed it from all the, the, the sightings boards. Exactly. So that if we do see a rhino, we won't say we where. We won't say where and we'll yeah. just, that's it, you know. Absolutely. Just for the safety of the Yeah, rhinos. absolutely. Okay. Love seeing the cameras. I wish they would put them up at every road. Exactly. 
We have to protect them. And they're so scarce. We haven't seen one yet. Even the safari vehicle operators say they have a hard time spotting them now. Yeah. True. That's hard so. You see a little jackal. You just said we haven't seen many jackals. Yeah. Machulu River. Little bits of water here and there. Yes. Same hither. Suckling mommy. Yes. The culvert here is their home. Yes, that's for sure. Bergendal, here we come. 10 kilos. Yes, ma'am. Let's hope the break in the rain lasts until the tent has been pitched. I hope so. Even longer than that, I would uh, gladly accept. <laughs> Bergendal. I and their logo, the logo has to be a rhino. Oh, I don't remember this entrance. Do I you? I can't remember it. No. Look at the little birdies building their nests overhanging the entrance. Yes. Electric wires, cattle grid. Love it. Welcome to Berg en Dal. You are now crossing, stop. You are now crossing the Berg en Dal Rhino Trail, the only one of its kind in the Kruger National Park. Learn about fauna and flora while enjoying the trail, uniquely adapted for the visually impaired. How gorgeous oh, is wow. that? Oh, brilliant, eh? Those are the little boards indicating the rhino trail. Nice. Another wild camp. It's brilliant though, I love it. So do I. Does this say, welcome to Bergendal? Yes, it does. Reception is quite deep in. Hey, it's a big camp. We stayed here one time. And while I remember our bungalow, I don't remember much else. Yeah, it was a really nice bungalow we stayed in. I do remember hyena coming to the boundary fence. Okay. We, we walked to the boundary fence and saw hyena. Yes, it's like rustic with a face brick and the yes. thatch. Let's go find ourselves a nice little campsite. They have 92 bungalows? Yep. It is a big uh, camp, eh? Yeah, it is. So we're driving along, driving along. 
but I'll just follow the markers. Yeah, it, it shows a little caravan and a oh, tent. A tent, especially for us. <laughs> Boxes again. Yes. That looks familiar. I know our previous number. I do. I do. It really looks like a suburb <laughs> with these face brick houses. I love them though. Yeah. Caution, children drive safely. That's a camping site. There is the ablution block. I don't think we have to worry so much about heat today. No. Well, there's the ablution. Electrical box right, yeah. You say they say they have three different campsites? sites, yeah. They are. This is the one we're driving through now, okay. there's another one opposite, and there's one further down. All right, we've been driving around now for a while. And I think we've spotted the perfect site for us. Spot mm. number 19. Spot number 19. Right here. Yes. Dustbins, tap, ablutions. Right, yeah. Kitchens there, everything. Is yeah, there. no, it's perfect. I think this is the perfect spot. Our campsite is right under the marula tree. Nice. You're making such good progress today. <laughs> and not a drop has fallen. Don't call it, don't call it. Well, if it happens now, it's not bad. Yeah, not too bad. So, are you going to pump up our mattress now? Yes, to see how that holds. <laughs> are you a little nervous? A little. Here we go. We shall report back in a little while. What is the verdict on our mattress? Well, it popped. The patch? Yes, and I stuck another one on now. Okay. A bigger one. Yes. To see if it holds. All right. So I'll start Googling good. alternatives. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's wake up every half an hour and pump it pump again. It again, yeah. We don't have much of a choice. That's it. Uh, every time I feel I'm rolling off of the bed, I wake up and I have to pump it. <laughs> okay. Oh, I hope it holds this time. I hope so too. So, our house is up. <laughs> I've inflated the mattress after the second fix and it's holding. So, we'll see what happens when we come and lay on it this evening, how if it's going to pop and I have to do my half an hour thing. But yeah, so far so good. Went well, the rain stayed away. But I'm sure it's going to rain tonight. But we're off on an afternoon game drive. Let's go and do that. First the shop. See you bush baby. First the shop. Yes, let's go and get something to drink. And a snacky. Some cold drinks. We're taking the S110. And we'll see the Machulu Auto. And what's that other one? Steilberg route. Steilberg? I don't know. I missed that now. I think so. And um, snack of choice this afternoon is beef druevorsch. Zaka. <laughs> <laughs> Uphill. Quite steep. Yeah, we are at the Machulu waterhole. Yeah. Very happy with how the water hole looks. The reservoir they can fill up some. Oh, but I think the trunks can reach down. It might mm. be like. I still want it to overflow. 
they shouldn't have to work hard for water but there's water everywhere now after the rains yeah so that's a good thing they can drink anywhere along the way they're not gonna rush and get all excited when they're going to a water oh. <laughs> a wild dog there's probably more up front must be nice The lady says there are about six, as far as they yeah. can tell, and one has got a tracking collar. Picked something up there. Oh, did it? That's probably what's left of the scrub here. Oh, okay. And they are so cute. We are on the Stalberg section of the road, which means steep mountain, and it's pretty steep. I spotted a spotted hyena. Hey, hey, hey. Those birds are sounding the warning, aren't they? Yes. What if they have eggs or chicks? That's what he's looking for, eh? You think? Oh, for sure. And you see this give it or... Lapwing. Lapwing makes as if it's injured. It lies down now to try and attract his attention. Getting too close for comfort. Uh. Our first dung beetles. How amazing. In Kruger. I love them. That's so good to see. I was wondering where are they? One, there he falls off. Uh, he carries on, back again. on again. Checks that everything's cool and then he goes again. Wow, he's high up the elephant. Star? Oh. I actually navigate steep terrain, oh. hey? Okay. It's a style part of style bar. <laughs> yes. That's nice. Yeah. Aren't the tracks a bit wide for us? Slightly, but we can do it. How's this elephant on top of the rock there? Definitely a mountain elephant, this one. That's for sure. Look at it. He must be so careful not to lose his footing. Looks like he's looking for the grass and the rocks. It might be the sweeter grass. We've got a hole. 
crazy herd of impala yeah a lot here hey yeah several nurseries included wow sir big family those yes <laughs> We are going to dinner at Tindlovu here at Bergendal. People watching a documentary here trying to make up our minds what to eat. Yeah, but yeah, but we have had that already. Yes, yes. And the crickets they have as well. Yeah. I don't see pop and water, so do you see it? No. No, they don't have that. Okay, we'll have to we chose to to sit outside. And we'll have to deal with the horse. They do have pop and burros on the opposite side. Ah. Oh, you see. Sonia's having the chicken pot pie with parmesan and her side is the char grilled corn on the cob. Yes, okay. also with parmesan. That's cool. I mean a cheesy mood. <laughs> and I'm having the half a chicken, but the peri peri half chicken with pop and shiba. Oh, that's Sonny's chicken pot pie with the corn on the cob. That looks good, eh? It does. And this is my half chicken peri peri with pop and shiba. Good morning from a clear skied Bergendal. We uh, had quite a bit of rain last night and a few drops still this morning. But now when we woke up to get up and to go for a drive, it's nice and clear. We've got a specific route we're going to go and look at now. Uh, it's quite a distance away, so it's just after five. So we want to hit the road and go see what we can find. We thought these two signs were quite interesting because I'm always fascinated when a camp has a cattle grid. The one says the cattle grid is electrified and no persons may walk past this point. And the other one says as an experiment, the cattle grid is electrified. Please do not walk on the grid. Huh. Interesting. First yeah. time I've seen signs like these. But I think we've seen electrified cattle grids before. Yes. Now up ahead we saw yesterday the Bergendal Day Visitor Site. Yes. It's closed. It's no. closed. The entire... Hey! Good morning, Bucky.
the entire little road to it seems closed. There yeah, is. Don't think it exists anymore. Yeah. Finally seen a rhino. Do you know what makes me so happy? Yeah. It's that you spotted it. Fantastic. Well, I can hear him breathing, eh? He looks quite beautiful without his horns. Shame. That's what's keeping him alive. It's sad though. My favourite animal to see. And to see him with no horns. I can live with it. Yeah, at least we can still see him, eh? Yes. It's a white rhino. Bergen Dal, they visit a picnic area, but the road's closed to it, so it doesn't look like it exists anymore. Yeah, or oh, it's no, it's no longer operational at least. Yeah, it's quite strange. They yeah. say so close to an entry gate here. Little baker. Chum. They're beautiful with that black mark between yeah. the eyes running down to the nose, eh? This footage is very far and unstable because it's a, a little falcon in a tree there. And it's apparently called a sooty falcon, which is very rare. Someone told us about it. The lady says it's a rarity here, but it returns every year. Is that what she said? Yes, that's what she said. Well, I had a hard time spotting it. The other one is coming. We just love it when they chat, eh? Incredible sound. <laughs> Went for a quick stroll in the road. Yeah. Renoster Pan. We haven't been here for a long time, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have fond memories of this place. I'll explain why when we get there. Now, I have a very interesting story about the Noster Pan. It looks so different here now from about 28 years ago 
when when that incident happened yeah we were parked here with another two or three vehicles and um there was zebra coming to drink water and they were a little bit nervous but they came and they drank water and then they left and then there was a giraffe in the distance also standing i think about by those trees at the back there looking in this direction but just didn't come and then three young kudu came to drink water and um while we were sitting here and they would i think there where that heron just flew to now they um they were drinking water about there and to the to the right over here i saw movement in the bush and when i looked at it i, I couldn't see anything and then i could out of the corner of my eye see something moving in the bush over here and then all of a sudden a female lioness just flew out and hit the kudu and Middle kudu. Middle kudu. Killed it right here. And she had a little cub. And then after it was dead, she dragged it away into the bushes. And uh, came back. What was interesting, she came back. And I spoke to a ranger to ask why. Because she came and she scratched the, the blood and the marks and everything of where she had killed the, the kudu. And he said they did that to disguise the, the kill from vultures and other animals because she had the cub she didn't want them to come and see what had happened there needless to say that was an incredibly traumatic experience for me yeah and you just wanted to stay and stay and stay what i will never forget is as she dragged the kudu away the little cub got on top of the kudu yes, yes. while she was dragging it yes. away and i remember the the one that she took being even a little smaller than the other two yes, she definitely went for the younger smaller one, one yeah, yeah. yeah. and i covered my ears and i just bawled i must tell you the impact of what that was it was incredible the strength that that cat had eh? wow to, to see it with your own eyes was crazy we've uh, seen three kills yes. in our time in the kruger park uh, but this one, the other two weren't as vivid and as violent and as clear yeah. as this one was. It was, the Nostrpan will forever be associated with that experience. Yes. That's our story of the Nostrpan. And that, mind you, is a black-headed heron. Okie doke. We are turning off of the H3 onto the H22. Yes, so good sightings on the board, on this road. Yes. And we wanted to take it yesterday, but ended up doing the tar route around. Yep. This is the jock track again, 1885. Uh, the plaque has been removed, but according to the map, this is a place, I think, where they used to, what is it called? An outspan. Where they An used outspan, to camp, where uh, they used to, yeah. Camp and relax and Take rest, a rest, yeah. Uh, before they moved on again. It's so interesting that they've put these things up here. But we'd like to read the story. Yeah. Historical site. What kind? I think it's the dam. The first concrete dam that was built. Is that what the map tells you? Yes. All right, let's go check. The first concrete dam in the Kruger Park was built here in the Ntomeni Spreit by the supervisor of Pretorius Corp Rest Camp, M. Rowland Jones, during 1931 and 1932. Let me see if I can go and see the dam wall. It's so dense here, I hope we can catch a glimpse. Yeah. If you look through the brush there, there, you can see the top part of the old concrete wall. You can see it's ancient concrete, eh? It's so dense here. Yeah, very dense. Oh, that's the best shot I can get. I can see it clearly. It's the H22 water hole. <laughs> Newly formed. <laughs> so this is the next uh, jock trek memorial. 
which reads, Prior to 1876, Thomas Hart established an overnight station here at Josikulu Drift for black bearers who carried trade goods from Delagoa Bay to Pretoria Scorp. He was murdered here by a band of black robbers on 10th August 1876 and buried near his trading post by friendly Swazi warriors. Stone Memorial Cairn. Not sure where that would be. No. Thomas Hart. So interesting, okay. eh? Yeah, I've never heard that name before. Never, no. Stienbocki. She's posing nicely. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yes, another historical site. Oh. Sure. It's a ditchy road there. Yep. So there's no way we're going to get through here with our little car. Um, and this is such a pity because this is the one we really wanted to go and see. This is the one I came all the way back here for. And this is where the birthplace of Jocker the Bushveld was. I so wanted to get to see it. I'm just too scared. Yeah, it doesn't help we get stuck here. So I'm not going to do it. But on at the end of this road is where Jocker the Bushveld was born. I, I would have loved to have seen that. I know. You've been speaking about it for the past two days. Yes. Is it Dwarf Mongoose? Yes. Look at him. Do you know I thought it was dung in the road? So did I, the two of them. I thought it was dung. Oh, yes, the other one looking at me still. Wow. A young kudu. That's a baby kudu. That must be one of the tiniest ones we've ever yeah. seen. Cool. As we were approaching them, you could see in the road there was evidence that there were elephants around. These are the first we've seen today. Yes. A little terrapin. Oh, we're just waiting for it to cross the road. Mommy? Look at the little hind legs. Yeah. Tiny. It's just a little bit bigger than a matchbox. But he's luckily fast. Yeah. Yeah, he's across. Look how slow he walks. The Afrikaans name is perfect for him, Trapsikis. Yeah. Check the movement of the head yeah. and the neck. Wow. You're welcome. The sun has come out, so we decided to stop here at Afsal and buy us some ice cream to celebrate. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. The skies are blue today. The green seems greener and the blue seems bluer. It's so welcome. <laughs> The young one. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> You're that beautifully clean, eh? <laughs> With the loads of rain we had the past few days, we had these flying ants. And this is them now starting their new colonies. Most of them won't survive. Well, yeah, in the camp, I suppose none of them will. But I think these are what turn out to be those huge termite mounds that we drive past. They already look 
Like miniature ones. Yeah, oh, miniature termite now. Now they're starting theirs and it depends on which survive and then they build up this huge colony. It's incredible. So yeah. I suppose we're going to drive over hundreds of them now. Yes, yes. As usual, all we leave behind are our footprints. Yep, that's how we roll. Exactly. And when you look at this, you can't believe we slept here last night. <laughs> and quite soundly too. Yeah, it was pretty cool. The mattress held, by the way. Oh yes, the mattress did not conk in. <laughs> <laughs> so you had uninterrupted sleep. Yes, duct tape worked well. Super glue, the patch and duct tape. So yeah. <laughs> A combo of the three did yeah. the trick. So Luckily now, the shop had duct tape. Fantastic that they did. Now what I want to do is go and explore the camp, Berg en Dal. And you know, it's such an appropriate name because the area is surrounded by Berge en Dale. Exactly. Which are mountains and valleys? Yes. So it could be called Mountain Valley. <laughs> first place I want to stop at is here by the swimming pool just to show you what the pool looks like. The Bergendal pool. It's a big camp so I'm glad you're driving around yeah. and not walking yeah, around. Yeah. So many children having fun here. So hot and humid that this is the place to be. It's a big guest house. This looks quite cool. Yeah, hey? I think it's like three bedrooms and all of that. Yeah, Two for bathrooms. a big group, yeah. that's fantastic. On the boundary fence. Yeah, there's a big bushbuck as well. Male bushbuck. Nice. This looks a similar yes. says guest house. I want to take you for a walk here around reception and the shop and show you the view from the restaurant where we ate last night. I showed you what the restaurant looked like inside. It's very interesting. Look at this. this is a new sightings board. It's not in use yet. But rhinos have been removed. There are no rhinos on it. I find that very, very interesting. And on the old ones, you have no place markers to mark where you saw the rhinos. Took me a while to figure that out. And this is the amphitheater where they watched the movie last night on the lines that I showed you. Forms are subject to weather condition. Oh, this is so nice. We wanted to sit outside, but it's just the insects were crazy last night. After the rain, the flying ants. interesting is this is an elephant oh this is a hippo oh. buffalo it's a giraffe Hi there. There you are. Hi,
noticed these blind blinds yesterday with the animals on specifically made it's kudu rhino looks like a rabbit balloon frog it's fantastic it's this rhino whoa This is a rubbing post with a rhino's rub against old tree stumps and stuff like that. Here's a picture of how they did it. Rhino during the Stone Age. The reception. That's the shop again. Park shop. Royal Rhino African Cream the Cure. Whoa! What does this cost? Doesn't say. Can just imagine.
fueled up. Quite a fancy filling station. Yes. Right? We found this very interesting. They have a, a trail called the Rhino Trail. And look out across the road, you have these rhino footprints. And you can walk right around Bergendal following the Rhino Trail. And they've got information things all over the show here, which um, explains what is what, what plants are what. Goes all the way down to the restaurant and walks along the river there and there are plaques there with braille on for the visually impaired to be able to read everything. Thank you for staying at Bergendal. Well thank you for letting us stay here, Bergendal. Yeah. So that was our visit to Bergendal. It was good to see, <laughs> as we to get, see the camp again. Uh, as we get greeted by baboons. Ah, ah, ah. Yes, there are a few. Yeah. <laughs> we shall see you on our way to the next camp.